The best time to take a forage sample is as near to the time of feeding as possible. Sampling at some period of time after harvest and storage accounts for any heating or weathering that has occurred during storage. Samples must closely resemble the entire lot of forage. In addition, each sample must represent only one lot of forage. A lot of forage consists of forage harvested from one field at the same cutting and maturity within a 48-hour period. It usually contains less than 100 tons of hay. The most important consideration when identifying the lot is uniformity. All forage from the same lot should be similar for types of plants, fields, cutting dates, maturity, variety, preservatives, and drying agents. Variation in any of these characteristics can cause substantial differences in forage feed value. When these characteristics differ, designate and sample a new lot of forage. Simply stated, different cuttings of alfalfa need to be sampled separately and tested. If a lot of forage consists of 30 big round bales, core sample 10 to 15 different bales to get a representative sample. Depending on the diameter of the probe, this number of cores should be enough to fill a two-quart Ziploc plastic bag. A two-quart Ziploc plastic bag can be used to put the sample in and send to the forage testing laboratory. This is the amount of sample needed by the testing lab to conduct the analysis. For big round bales, core sample the wrapped side of the bale by placing the probe at about the midpoint as determined by height and length of the bale. Hold the forage sampling device at about a 90 degree angle to the bale. If the bale is net wrapped, break the net wrap in the area the probe will penetrate the bale so the plastic wrap is not part of the sample and so the wrap does not coil around the end of the probe. For large square bales, the same process can be used. Take a core sample by placing the probe at about the midpoint on the end of the bale, not the side of the square bale. After each core, plunge the sample into the collection canister. If the forage is more moist than what's common for baled forages, the sample can be wedged in the barrel of the probe. If the probe is not plunged after each core, the forage can become bound in the barrel of the probe and it will be difficult to plunge into the collection canister. Packaging the forage sampling. The amount of sample that's needed by the forage testing laboratory should fit into a one to two quart Ziploc plastic bag. If the lot that was sampled resulted in more material than would fit into the plastic bag, a representative subsample will need to be obtained. Pour the sample on a newspaper and hand mix the sample. Spread the sample out and divide it into quarters. Discard two of the quarters and combine the other two. Determine if this amount will fit into the plastic bag. If not, repeat the quartering procedure outlined above until the subsample fits into the plastic bag. Extra caution must be taken when subsampling hays, as some of the fines may be lost in the subsampling procedure. Make sure this doesn't happen. Squeeze the air out of the plastic bag and seal the bag. Label the bag with your name, address, lot ID, and type of material. Most testing labs provide a description sheet to report this information and to request the desired tests. It's important that the information is filled out accurately and legibly. If the lab doesn't have a description sheet, clearly state what tests are desired on the plastic. Mail or deliver samples so they arrive at the laboratory by midweek to avoid weekend delays. If samples are taken on a Saturday, store them in a cool, dry place until they're mailed on Monday. Sampling ground hay. To sample ground forages, you'll need a five gallon bucket. One fourth of the sample should be taken from the top half of the pile and the rest taken from the middle half. Take hand samples. Avoid allowing fines to sift through the fingers. During the sampling process, the palms should be facing up, the knuckles facing down, and fingers together, not spread apart. This sampling process will result in more sample than what will fit into a two quart Ziploc plastic bag. Pour the entire contents of the bucket onto a newspaper or cement slab. Mix the sample. Spread the sample out and divide the sample into quarters. Discard two of the quarters and combine the other two. Determine if this amount will fit into the plastic bag. If not, repeat the quartering procedure outlined above until the subsample fits into the plastic bag. 
Extra caution must be taken when subsampling haze, as some of the fines may be lost in the subsampling procedure. Make sure this doesn't happen. Squeeze the air out of the plastic bag and seal the bag. Label the bag with your name, address, lot ID, and type of material. For interpretation of the results from a forage analysis, go to a learning module on our website, beef.unl.edu. There's a navigator bar titled Learning Modules and click on Learning Modules. In the middle of the page that comes up next, there's a learning module titled Understanding a Nutrient Analysis. Right below that, in red, reads Understanding Feed Analysis. Click on Understanding Feed Analysis and the learning module will come up on the page.